Hello, my name is Jasmine, and today is my journal entry. Today is October the 6th, and it is 6.10 a.m., and I am preparing for my work day. I hope everyone has had a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. We get ready to go into the weekend, for sure. I just got back from Florida. I was in Florida last weekend through Monday. Um, me and my boyfriend went. We had an excellent time. We ran into some issues with um, the rental car company. Oh my gosh. The rental car company. If y'all want to know who not to rent from, just hit up, email me and I'll tell you because they're terrible. I'm not even going to put them out here. Don't rent from them. And then we went and stayed at a resort. Um, the resort was the, Hilt, the Grand, Hilton Grand Tuscany in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we had some issues um, getting in and that's because I had booked through a booking company and a booking company didn't send them payment. So when they looked at my account, it looked as if I didn't pay it in full, but I had already paid for it. But anyhow, um, they got everything sorted out and the resort was beautiful. We had a good time. It was clean. It was nice. Um, the people were nice. Um, we had a great time. The only thing I didn't like is that I guess they be having classes for these damn, they be trying to sell them timeshares and they was bugging the shit out of me. And I, like I said, I wasn't interested. And um, they try to give you shit like free tickets to SeaWorld or discount tickets to SeaWorld or they'll offer you plane tickets, but I'm not buying a timeshare. To me, I just, I feel like that is like a, I feel like timeshares are a scam. Shout out to my dad because him and his wife do it, but I think it's, I think it's a scam. I don't like them. But anyhow, um, we kicked it. We had a great time. We went to Universal Studios and we ate some good food. We saw my family, which I haven't seen in over 20 years. We kicked it hard. It was, oh my gosh, it was so good seeing my cousins. I got emotional, um, saw them and we came back and we are back. Lately, my focus has been um, my doing my attunements. Um, the four or five months when I do work at my attunements, um, it's a very intense time spiritually. I dream a lot more. I see a lot more. I feel a lot more. Um, it's 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 a great um, time to you know heighten my awareness, um, but it's also a great time to do some high power spiritual work. Um, for those who don't know, who didn't hear the episode that I talked about them in, they're called the Attunements of Higher Consciousness. And they are sold on Tybro, Tybro.com, and you can get them there. Um, for those whose funds may be um, limited or in circulation, I would say join their, join their website and look for specials. One thing I like about Tybro is that even though they have very expensive products, they are always having a special. So it might be a 40% off or a 50% off or a 20% off. That's how I purchase all of my products through Tybro. Um, that I can't necessarily afford at the moment is that I catch them when they have sales and they have them like probably several times a year. Um, they'll have a sale and that's when I'll go in. Like I'm waiting for the medallions to go on sale. Cause I want a new medallion. Um, I would say that, um, dealing with my children, my 21 year old daughter, her two kids and her grand, her, um, her boyfriend are back at my house now. So I have a full house. Um, though I love all four of them, I love my grandkids, I love my daughter, her boyfriend's great, um, they clout in my space, so I'm finding myself more irritable, so I have to readjust to the extra energy, it's like I got rid of my brother and they got four more people, I don't know what lesson the universe is teaching me, but it's, it's looking very Willa-ish, and if you want to know what Willa-ish is, my mother's name was Willa, and we were growing up, we always had somebody living with us, and sometimes I just wanted to be me and my kids. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just wanted to be us. My cousin's here from New York, but she don't count. She's good. She stays to herself. She cleans after herself. She's 30. She's fine. Now, my daughter, on the other hand, that child always been all over the place. There's not one room in that house where her stuff isn't at. I mean, everything. It's just baby stuff, baskets of clothes, her stuff. You could tell where she ate at. You could tell where she rolled her weed at. You could just tell where she did everything because she leaves a trail. It's kind of like my brother. And that drives me mad. Now, look, I am not like the 
spotless, like everything has to be spotless type of person. Cause I've always grew up around a whole bunch of kids. So there's always going to be some on the floor or some somewhere, but when you just have sh- shit everywhere in, it just drives me nuts. Like if you eat, put your plate in the sink. If you roll in a blunt, you know, you take the little shavings at the cigar, throw the cigar away. You just throw it away. Why are you leaving it on the table? It's just little stuff like that, that I don't like. So, um, uh, I'm back from out of town. I'm settled. She came the day before I left. So I plan to have, you know, just a little heart to heart talk with her. I just hope it don't get bent out of shape because um, even though she's a Capricorn, she is a, I think she's a Scorpio moon or a Pisces moon. Whatever it is, she gets emotional. She gets bent out of shape. Yeah. So wish me luck. <laughs> she's a great girl. But they, it's, just, it's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. Ah! And I already know my utilities are going to go up. I'm not looking forward to that. But, you know, I love and support her. Um, so for me, I was thinking about my relationship. And I do understand that relationships pose a chance for growth. Especially when you're healing from something in the past. Look, I know, and everybody's not going to agree with me. But you know when people be like, you shouldn't get into a relationship until you're completely healed. And my thing is, how do you know you're completely healed unless you're in a relationship? Like, it's got to be tested somehow. So I don't I don't agree with that thinking. You know, do I think like in between relationships, you should take time to heal? Of course. Do I think that shadow work should be done? Of course. Um, you know, deep diving, digging, looking at yourself. Of, sh- of course. But I've also learned that being in relationships also gives me the opportunity to look at myself. Now, look, a lot of people, they get in relationships and they focus so much on the other people, the person that they expect that person to bend, to move the way they want to, they want them to be. And it's not necessarily that way. I think relationships can serve as mirrors and they're great opportunities for you to look at yourself. And for me, relationships does that and this relationship I'm in it's it's no different you know um so for the first time um in our relationship since we've been together we've been together a little while now um it I was tested of course so I knew that at that moment I could have took that I could have took the opportunity to kind of focus on him and say you did this you did that you know what I mean or I could take it an opportunity to look at myself you know I have boundaries. I think boundaries are healthy. I do think that people don't really understand what boundaries are. But I do think having certain boundaries, you know, are healthy in relationships. Um, there is a difference between having boundaries and um, setting like, you know, certain standards. So prime example, um, like a boundary for me may be like um, something I don't like. Like, you know, setting a boundary may be like, let's say a person is doing something that you don't um, particularly care for. So, you know, you express that um, they're crossing a boundary when they do that. Like prime example for me, a boundary for me is my, my phone. And I have nothing to hide. He knows the code to my phone. Um, he can he can look at my phone. He can go at my phone and look at anything. And if you look at my phone, you've got access to all my social media and everything. But a boundary that I have is that I have to have some form of privacy. Don't touch my phone. Now, look. If you feel like I'm hiding something and, and that's an insecurity that, I, that you have and you want me to show you what's in my phone. I'm more than happy to do so, but don't pick up my stuff and go through my stuff. That's just a boundary that I have because I like a little privacy. I could be, there are people that text me private things about themselves that I keep privately and I would prefer that you not touch my phone. That's a boundary that I ask that you don't touch. I don't let my kids touch my phone. That's a boundary. Another boundary is um, if I didn't give birth to you or if I'm not messing with you, I don't want you laying in my bed. It's just a boundary. Like, don't lay in my bed. Some people, a complete, and my bed is so comfortable, and my room is so welcoming. A complete stranger walking my house and just laying on my bed. Don't, don't, don't do that. 
you know, I have boundaries. Like with my kids, when I put drinks in the refrigerator, if the if I put a drink downstairs in the kitchen in the refrigerator, it's it's open game. But if it's in my room, in my sacred space, in my refrigerator, don't touch it. That's a boundary. Okay, that's what boundaries are. Standards are just to me. Standards is like okay, this is what I want. This is what I'm gonna do. You cross this line, I can't deal with you. You know what I mean? So. <sighs> With him, I feel like uh, there's a standard that he walks a thin line on uh, with me. And the standard for me is communication. And I'm just being transparent with y'all. He know I'll be talking about y'all. I'm not going to talk to y'all about nothing he don't know about. But communication, it's <laughs> when we're together, he communicates excellently. But he does not like to talk on the phone. And I know this man is not lying because when I am with him, his phone will be, he won't even know where the hell his phone is. He just, he don't answer it. He don't, he don't text. He don't call. Half the time the shit is dead. The only, the only reason why he probably keeps his phone somewhat charged is because he, he knows that he has to, he, he knows it's a standard for me. He has to contact me. But the issue with being in relationships and having standards is that sometimes people get comfortable and they kind of revert back to their old ways. And what happens is that sometimes you got to like kind of tap them a little bit like, hey, you know, so I was tested because, you know, it was a it, it was an issue with communication and it it really rubbed me the wrong way. So for me, once a standard is crossed, my first thing to do is I don't want to communicate. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to work through it. I, I, I'm out. <laughs> and I, y'all, I know it's wrong. But I'm still healing from I'm still healing. So, you know, my first thought was, you know what, I'm just going to start. I'm just going to shit. It's over. I'm done. You know, I'm about to be out. I don't care. I will love you today and cut your ass off tomorrow. I don't care. It, it's, it's definitely a defense mechanism that I need to work on because I'll be trying to figure out how I've been a re- in a relationship for 14 years. We don't work through all sorts of problems. And now I'm just intolerable. You know what changed? I'm not sure. I think it's, you know, spending so many years suppressing things and suppressing hurt and pain, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's, I be, I'm, I feel like I'm protecting myself, but I'm also setting myself up for failure in the same way. So I'm trying to find a more healthy way to navigate through this because he is everything that I want in a person. He's supportive. He's loving. He's, I have a checklist and he's checked off every single check, put it that way. Every single check I have and that, that bitch, it got like 30. I got, got a number one thirty, and they all check off. Um, but whenever I feel like something is wrong, or I feel like, you know, somebody's acting weird or different, I'm often I often have a fear of um being abused or being ghosted, and other things. I'm going to want to pull out. I'm going to want to run, and running is not the answer. You know, sometimes you got to deal with things face on. So um, instead of sabotaging a situation because I felt like um, a standard was violated or because a boundary was breached, uh, I'm deciding to attempt to talk through it. But first, I had to look at myself to figure out where these issues are coming from. Why are they coming to the surface? What I need to work on? what I need to shift before I sit down and talk to him because his mechanism of communication could be an issue that he has from his past that he needs to heal from. And it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with me. So I use relationships as a, as an opportunity to not only look at myself, but to continue healing, you know, from things that I need to heal from. And also try to learn to compromise, to work things out with people, because I don't care how perfect you are in any relationship. You have issues. There's things that happen. You have falling out. Your partner's going to get on your nerves sometimes. And sometimes y'all going to get along and it's completely okay. Today, I I don't like his ass. You know, it's okay. I I can say that openly. I love him. I got love for him. Um, 
we haven't been together too, too long, but we've been together long enough. Um, if he was to ask me to marry him tomorrow, I would probably say yes. <laughs> There's no answer. He's just, he's just too good to let go. But that little afraid child within me, that little afraid Jasmine is like, bitch, run. <laughs> it is. So um, I do understand, too, that if I run, I'm just going to meet another him. <laughs> I'm going to meet, it's, the opportunity is going to present itself again until I, um, you know, overcome whatever obstacle this is or whatever lesson I need to learn, I need to learn because I'm tired of repeating this course too. Shit. I wonder how many lifetimes I've had to repeat this fucking course. You know what I mean? Like how many lifetimes have I struggled with this? That's what I want to know. Because sometimes relationships for me don't be relating. They don't, oh look, six, six, six. <clears throat> relationships for me don't be relating <clears throat> so I'm sorry y'all I think I'm coming down with something maybe a cold <clears throat> hold on <clears throat> yeah but relationships don't be relating so my question for you to, is <laughs> what are your boundaries and what are your standards how do you stick through them to them and when you're in a relationship with a person that has totally different boundaries and totally different standards, how do y'all come together to make them work? And if you're single, how would you? Because what, self, what would be selfish of me is to force him to um, completely change who he is to make me feel better. And it would be wrong of him to expect me to completely change who I am to make him feel better. But there has to be compromise somewhere. At somewhere, some point in your relationship, you're going to have to compromise. I'm not compromising communication, though. That's one thing that I know that is needed. Um, I'm not compromising that. I think that um, communication is important. Um, having the ability to talk through things and sort through things is important because let's put let's let's be honest here there are days there's going to come a time where we have to have a tough conversation but anyhow i'm going to hop off of here i love you all i hope you all have an excellent day i hope your bank accounts are full and your stomachs are full and if they're not they will be and if you're sitting on your ass waiting for some magic to happen, get up off your ass and make something happen for yourself. Peace.